The Israeli military said on Monday its troops were continuing operations in Lebanon against Hezbollah. They claimed IDF troops located terrorist infrastructure, military sites, weapon stockpiles, a missile storage facility, and compounds designated for infiltrating into Israeli territory that they destroyed. Some experts say Israel may be aiming to create a depopulated buffer zone, a strategy it has already deployed along its border with Gaza. Hezbollah began firing rockets, drones and missiles from Lebanon into Israel in solidarity with Hamas immediately after the Hamas-led October 7, 2023, attack on Israel, which triggered the war in Gaza. The year-long cross-border fighting boiled over to full-blown war on October 1, when Israeli forces launched a ground invasion of southern Lebanon for the first time since 2006. As North Korean troops prepare to join Russian forces in the war on Ukraine, Kyiv is stepping up a psychological warfare campaign to target the North Korean soldiers, a high-ranking Ukraine official said. The Ukrainian military intelligence service-run project I Want to Live released a Korean-language video message on YouTube and X. The project also posted a Korean-language text message on Telegram. The messages urged North Korean soldiers to surrender, arguing that they do not have to meaninglessly die on the land of another country. It also offered to provide food, shelters and medical services. US says it expects North Korean troops to enter combat against Ukraine in the coming days in Kursk. Ukrainian servicemen with the help of the Kursk operation have gained an advantage over Russia that they have never had during the entire full-scale war experts say. According to them, it consists in the fact that the Ukrainian armed forces do not need to defend any of the Russian cities in the Kursk region. You just fight where it's advantageous and retreat when it's not, and that's a really effective way to fight. Rand Corporation military expert Michael Bonnert tells Business Insider, the war on its own territory has reportedly caused the Ukrainian military to cling fiercely to some cities until it had no choice but to retreat. Bakhmut is one example. The report says, The full-scale war has put Ukraine at a disadvantage, experts say, since most of the fighting is taking place within the territory of one country. However, that changed in August with the start of the operation in the Kursk region as the Ukrainian armed forces can now take advantage of the terrain and fight in the most effective way. And they can do it without consequences. Bonnert said, adding that these are not Ukrainian cities, so the Ukrainian military can choose the most advantageous positions for combat and defense in order to be able to build fortifications. Stimson Center military expert William Alberk noted that Russia has so far recaptured the easiest parts and that the Russian occupiers will have a much harder time dealing with the rest of the Ukrainian bulge. Ukraine, he said, can choose when and where to defend itself. Albert also added that Ukraine could create kill zones and traps to slow down Russia's advance since there is no need to defend the entire stronghold. 
It's a huge operational advantage for a commander when you don't have to draw any lines in the sand, he said. The US has identified around 8,000 North Korean soldiers in the Kursk region. This may take part in combat operations in the coming days, according to a statement from US Secretary of State Antony Blinken. He noted that, according to U.S. estimates, there are about 10,000 North Korean military personnel in Russia. The most recent information indicates that as many as 8,000 of those North Korean forces have been deployed to the Kursk region. We've not yet seen these troops deploy into combat against Ukrainian forces, but we would expect that to happen in the coming days, Blinken specified. According to him, the Russians are training North Korean soldiers in artillery, drones and basic infantry operations, including trench digging. This indicates that the North Koreans are being prepared for use in frontline operations. If these troops engage in combat or combat support operations against Ukraine, they would be counted legitimate military targets, the U.S. Secretary of State emphasized.